Oh, hi, oh, hi, or konnichiwa. I'm here today to teach you a little bit about Japan, boys and girls. Guess where I am? I'm right at school. I have our globe. I have our whiteboard. I have extra things to show you all around the room. But first of all, we need to know about um, where this country of Japan is from and a little, or where it is, not where it's from, um, and a little bit about this country. First of all, I'm gonna take our globe and we're gonna find out where we are. We are right where the Eagle area is here. And if we go swimming or sailing across the ocean, we come to this big, long island. And that is Japan. China is here. Countries of Vietnam, South Korea, North Korea are in these areas. And let's see, this looks like the Philippines right here. Um, let me see where else. Where is it? Thailand is here. Um, here's the Vietnamese area, this long, skinny, pink country. Um, let's see what else I can find. Oh. Guadalupar, Lumpar, um, all kinds of wonderful Asian countries are all in this area. And when we get over here, we're in India, so we don't got to go that far. And then China is here, Russia is here, um, and then over here is Europe. So we're gonna go back to Japan. Japan, like I said, is an island country. And it is completely surrounded by the Pacific Ocean waters. And to its west are all those Asian countries. To the east, we're back over in the Portland area. You have to go clear across the ocean. Um, Japan is a country that is um, part of what's called an archipelago which is a group of many, many islands. In fact, Japan is made up of, well, let me see, I had a note here to tell me how many islands, 6,852 islands. Now of those islands, boys and girls, I don't know how many of them can be what's called inhabited. That means can they be lived on that island? But I do know that on Japan, that is a big over 100,000 miles, square miles of land that people live on. And there are 127 million people living on that island. So there's a lot of people. But the thing about the island of Japan, and let me get my poster here. It's just a, it's not an actual picture of it. It's a, it's a painting of it. It shows all these different places, but they say that three-fourths of Japan has mostly forests and mountains. And so that's really hard to uh, grow grow uh, fruits and vegetables on or, or wheat or flour. It's hard to farm that area. Let's put it that way. Very hard to farm it. But what do you see? All the way around this island, there is the ocean. And so what do you think they might have a lot of to eat? Let's think for a minute. Ocean. What do they get from the ocean? What we get from the ocean. A lot of fish. Um, they can eat seaweed products. You know, your dried seaweed that you eat that's crispy and good. I know some of you boys and girls eat that at lunchtime. It's green flat sheets and it smells a bit fishy, but that's how the ocean is. And that's where seaweed um, comes from or kelp. Um, so on this uh, island is uh, the tallest mountain is Mount Fuji. And the largest city, let me see where it is, is right over here. And it is called Tokyo. And Tokyo is their capital. And another part of their island is Hokkaido, and that's a northernmost island. And then there's Nagasaki, which is the furthermost south. There's Shikoku, I don't know if I'm saying that right, 
Shikoku is this island here. And the rest is the main island of, I think it's pronounced Honshu. Honshu. But all together, this makes up Japan. And here's a picture of the world and the darkened uh, spot right, this teeny tiny little spot near that arrow. See, there's the arrow. There's that little spot is the island country of Japan. And Japan is the 10th biggest population in the world. So my, my information tells me now, Japan. Japan uh, means sun origin. And in Japanese, they call it Nippon. And I will show you their, their flag is white with a red like dot on it, a big red dot. And what do you think that stands for? I think you have it. If the country means sun origin, then that probably represents the big sun. Now, I want to show you, before I go into the other pictures, I want to show you about Mount Fuji. And here is Mount Fuji, the tallest mountain. We're going to do a little painting of Mount Fuji in a little bit here. I'm going to show you the things that I have first. And Mount Fuji has been painted, and it's beautiful. And there's this beautiful building here that's old-style Japanese building. Um, just lovely to look at. Um, let's see what else we can see on here. Uh, here's cherry blossom season. You see this little picture right here. And do you see the cherry trees? At one time, you couldn't get cherry trees other than going to Japan, or at least to that part of Asia. We didn't have cherry trees in America. And the Japanese country, uh, well, the country of Japan, gave America a lot of cherry trees for Washington, D.C. And they are the most beautiful trees in the springtime. Um, they they um, have... Uh, interesting handwriting. This is called their calligraphy, which is very different than my family's calligraphy, of which we have uh, our business. Um, their letters, and I'll show you uh, one that has, I don't know who these action figures are, but their letters are like pictures, and it's a whole word. It's not just a letter. It's a word. And so how would you like to have to memorize all of those are just some of their words. And you have to know all the characters and what they represent and how we figure that out. I don't know because I've never studied Japanese, except I know a couple of words. And I'll get more into that when we study words when I'm at home. I will do uh, the book that I have there. Now, what else can I tell you about Japan? Um... They speak Japanese, and Japanese has, um, I think Japanese must sound similar to Hawaiian. Similar, not the same, but just similar in the vowels that they use and some of the, um, the letters. Now, one of the things um, that I'm seeing on my little notes here is that it sits on what's called the Ring of Fire. Now, the Ring of Fire it goes around from Japan, that's volcanoes, all the way around America and down this way. And when there is a volcano or an earthquake, it affects the volcanoes in the ring of fire. And Japan seems to have quite a few earthquakes and quite a few um, volcano type of activities. Now, when Japan had an earthquake, they had what was called a tsunami. And a tsunami, if I can find my paper real quick, I will show you a picture while well, I can tell you about it. Uh, when there is a tsunami, there's usually an earthquake first, and then the water at the ocean goes rushing out, and all you see, you don't just see beach, you see dry, dry land. And if you were to ever see a tsunami, you saw if you were ever at the beach and the water all of a sudden raced out and all you saw was sand, that means get yourself to a high, high place because all that water is going to come rushing back 
and could flood you. So you don't want to be flooded out by a tsunami. Just nothing to be frightened of. We I don't think we've had anything close to that since 1950s down at Cannon Beach had it once and um, a few other places a little bit. But if we know what to do, then we're fully prepared. So if you see something like that, then you know. But in Japan and other Asian countries, they tend to have more tsunamis than in this area of the world. Um, so they're prepared. They know that there's a risk to living by the ocean. Um, let me show you some other pictures. In this picture here at the bottom, these ladies are dressed in traditional uh, Japanese kimonos. And a kimono is the robe that they would wear. It's beautiful, lovely. And this is a traditional Japanese tea. And it's in a tea garden house. And um, they do a ceremony. It is a lot of special things that they do for that cup of tea. And let's show you the other side of my poster here. I'm going to show you another picture of a woman and her daughter dressed in full kimono. Oh, here's a mask, a special mask that they might wear for their um, theater. Over on this side, let me show you this part of it. There's some carp kites. You're going to make a carp kite. And I'm going to open this up and you'll see they have a garden here. This is their meditation art. They rake a gravelly area. And if you ever get to the Japanese gardens in Portland, they have an area like this. And they have a um, tea house for ceremonial teas. But it's a beautiful garden uh, with little waterways and walkways and very pretty fish. Here is a typical meal that you might see in Japan. There's tea, there's fish, there might be some more um, vegetables in there. And that's a little bit of soy sauce. I don't know what's in the cup there. I don't know. That might be just soup of some sort broth. And there's a chopstick that's made for children to use. When you see the end like this, it helps children to use them. Now, let's see what else I have on my poster. It's a very good poster for learning about things. Oh, that looks like it's about, oh, here's something. Here's what you would see school children wearing, their uniforms. You know, some of you will be going to schools next year with uniforms, and that makes it very easy on mom and dad to know what you're gonna wear. Makes it easier for you to know you might have two or three uniforms, wash them every time you wear them, but you always have another one ready to go. But it's it's nice that you don't have to think about it and uh, worry about what anyone else is wearing in school. You're busy learning. This is called origami. The origami is the, um, the skill of folding paper to make a piece of paper into something else like a bird. You see the bird over here? There's a hat, and I don't know what this other thing is. Let me see. Well, I don't know what that is, but those are different things. Oh, and you boys and girls, you might see this guy jumping in the air. He is taking martial arts. I don't know if it's karate or what it is, but um, he's taking some sort of martial arts. That's to defend yourself. That's not to uh, hit somebody else with your kicks and things and only it's not for fun it's for some of it's for sport but when you're in danger that really helps um you to uh defend yourself now i wanted to show you one more thing before we go and i'll make another video with oh here i am up close and in your face here um i want to show you some of the dolls here are some itty bitty little dolls and they're very cute. One is of a man and one is of a woman. And they're dressed in traditional clothing. Very cute. They look like they're playing jump rope. I don't know. It looks so. Maybe that's a little boy and not a man. Maybe he had his head shaved uh, down the middle. Interesting hairdo. And they have a, a, a little um, doll here that almost, it's like she's just the slenderest little all made out of paper. And they are very good about making things out of paper. Very interesting folding and gluing and 
and use of different things. And she's beautifully done, very delicate. And it looks like her dress is upturned at the bottom even. And you can see that the paper has two different um, sides with two different sets of pattern or color. I'm going to put her back. That is a traditional clothing in Japan. Now I have some money to show you. And the main form of money is called the yen. And here it is some of the, the little coins. And they are as light as a feather. They feel like they're made out of aluminum. All right. Boys and girls, on the money note, I am going to, someone gave me all this money. I'll show you some more real quick and then we have to stop this video and start another one. So see all the different, it looks a little bit like a penny there, but it's not. When you see it up close, you can see one says 100 on it. That must be 100 yen. And, um, oh, let's see what this other one, if it says what it is, 10, 10 yen. Uh, one yen. So there's all different kinds. Yeah, very interesting. They have coins like we have coins. All right, boys and girls, we're going to keep going. This is part one of learning about Japan. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes.